Hey, so uh, my name is Jace Powell. I'm just going to do a quick, quick introduction about myself. I'm a combat veteran of Afghanistan, a former undercover narcotics agent uh, with the Federal Law Enforcement Agency. Um, a few years ago, I went back to college and uh, transitioned into cybersecurity. Uh, my, my path is atypical, so we'll talk about kind of ideal ways to, to get into cybersecurity for those that are interested. Um, for Fortress Information Security in Orlando as a security analyst. We, we mainly focus on securing the electric grid right now and preventing hackers from uh, you know, interrupting power and, and uh, nuclear power plants and stuff like that. Uh, so let's talk about cybersecurity. What is cybersecurity? In order to do that, we need to talk about what a hacker is. Um, hackers are not necessarily bad guys. A hacker is someone who learns how systems work and finds a weakness in that system or process. Hello. So you can have good hackers. Have somebody else join. Okay. All right. Hello, Mr. Rodriguez. It looks like your class is just joining us. I'm going to go ahead and unmute your microphone to see if we can hear you okay. All right. Can you hear us okay? All right. I don't hear anything from you. So either you don't have a microphone. Um, but if you do have a webcam and microphone, please send us a message if you want to send in questions along the way. Awesome. You can hear us. Okay. Do you want to share a webcam or anything? Okay. Awesome. No problem. You can continue to send in questions that way. And um, so if you hear my voice come up, I'm just moderating those questions that we get them as along the way. Uh, but this is Jace. He just got started and I'm going to let you take back over. Like you said, we just got started. Um, the, the question is, what is a hacker? A hacker is not necessarily a bad guy. A hacker is someone who learns how systems work and uh, finds a weakness or a vulnerability in that system or process. So you can have good hackers, which they call ethical hackers, or you can have criminals who use hacking to advance their crimes. So hacking in the, in and of itself is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, what I is I focus on securing systems from criminal hackers um, or state-sponsored hacking groups. Uh, North Korea, China, Russia, they're just actively trying to get off the laws and it's just constant attempts. Um, cybersecurity itself is a super fast growing field. Before we started, I hopped on Indeed and uh, found about a thousand open jobs in Florida. Uh, they're high paying jobs, you can make six figures, work from home. Uh, it's a great industry. It's super interesting. It's stimulating. Um, okay, so so cybersecurity, let's talk about that. Um, you have offense and defense. You can think of it that way, right? And uh, offense is obviously, you know, the hackers trying to break in and you have the defense, which is trying to keep the hackers from breaking in. Um, defenses job, defensive jobs, you, get, you have a security analyst, which is what I do. We harden systems, uh, detect hackers. Um, you have uh, cyber threat intelligence, which are people who proactively track hacking groups. Uh, a lot of hacking groups have kind of unique um, ways they do things, and uh, cyber threat analysts combine that information and report report on it. Uh, developers who build secure software by design. Traditionally, uh, software engineers would build uh, systems, and, and they wouldn't be secure by design. Um, so the, the whole secure by design thing is, is becoming big and there's a big demand for it. Um, you have security engineers who design uh, computer networks and systems for, um, you know, businesses and, and enterprises, uh, nonprofits, all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you also have risk management who uh, they, they work with companies to reduce their overall cyber risk. It's it's uh it's not for me it's it's a lot of policy and suit and tie stuff um now on the offensive side this is where it gets cool um there are, we talked about eth ethical hackers before um there are companies that will pay ethical hackers to break into their systems and show them where the weaknesses are uh the i didn't make the name for it but the the actual title of the job is penetration tester um, and again, it's, it's where they, they break in um, using uh, the same methods that hackers would use and, uh, you know, they find vulnerabilities. 
to take further, there is what's known as a red team, which is where they do uh, the pen testing duties, but they also do physical engagements. Um, they can be hired to break into buildings, uh, impersonate employees, stuff like that. And uh, there's there's a good demand for for jobs like that right now. Um, even as you have uh, government hacking units, uh, the NSA, Department of Defense, uh, they proactively hack and attack other um, enemies. ISIS was a, was a big one recently. Uh, the the U.S. government hacked all their systems and kept them offline. They had a real big propaganda operation. They were making like real well-made movies and everything, and uh, the U.S. government shut them down, and and they couldn't turn a computer on. So in, anyway, that that's kind of the offensive and defensive uh, side of cybersecurity. There's there's a lot more to it, a lot more nuance. Uh, let's talk about how to get into cybersecurity. Uh, first and foremost, you're you're going to need a degree, pretty much. Um, Preferably in computer science. There, there are IT um, degrees and everything, but they don't get as technical as they really should. It's computer science is really going to give you an excellent foundation. Um, it, it's worth it in most, but not all cases. Um, the state colleges, they have excellent programs. Um, they have computer, or, uh, sorry, cybersecurity clubs you can join, um, mentor programs. Um, there's meetups you can attend that you know not not just college or high school students, as anybody can join. Um, here you can learn Linux. Linux is like the foundation for uh, a lot of computer systems. Um, you know we're used to Windows and, and maybe Mac if you know you have home computers and stuff like that, but a lot of business stuff uses Linux, so it's really essential that if you want to get into cybersecurity, uh, you're competent and you can move around in Linux. Um, learn to code. Uh, Python is it's really popular. It's easy. It's powerful. Um, you can make you can do almost anything with Python. It's it's a great language to learn. Um, there's also C, C++, JavaScript. There's just the standard coding languages. Um, it's also good to be well-rounded and know a little bit about a lot of things. That, that'll really help you get along. Uh, okay, so shoot for internships. Um, after you know, coming through your freshman year, start flying uh, anywhere and everywhere you can locally. Uh, you'll, you'll make connections, you'll meet people, Worst case scenario, you'll just get a good letter of recommendation. Um, and, and it's it, it's really scaring me. My job through an internship. Um, try. Okay, so while you're in school, if you choose to go to school, um, try to take a part time job if you have time um, in um, just basic computer help desk, networking, system and administration, just, just something to get your foot in the door and build experience, practical experience. Um, that's, that's, uh, that'll really help. And that'll also set you apart from other uh, recent graduates. Uh, okay, work on people skills. This is a big one that I have. Um, you know, it's really easy to work on a computer all the time and, and just get used to typing everything, but being able to interface with clients in cybersecurity, uh, a lot of times, you know, companies hire us to do things for them. Well, part of hiring us is reporting on what we found. So being able to communicate um, effectively what we found, look at people face-to-face, -face, talk to them, write good reports, stuff like that is just super crucial. Um, not for everyone, but the military has an excellent program set up uh, for people trying to get into cybersecurity. Uh, you'll enlist, they'll train you, they'll give you a, a security clearance, all kinds of stuff. It's uh, Like I said, it's not for everybody, but it is a very good option for those uh, who are qualified and, and who wish to. Okay. What they call capture the flag games. So you're on your computer and you connect to um, a, a website or a capture the flag network. And uh, what you do is you hack in and you find a hidden file um, or they call it a flag. And it's kind of like 
it's kind of like a password, right? It's like proof that you successfully hacked them. And uh, there's a lot that are built for uh, high school students and college students. Pico CTF, that's P I C O C T F dot com, is one that's built specifically for high school students and college students. Um, and it starts basic and it, the foundations just build on themselves up and up. Uh, and they're fun. It's pretty interesting. Um, com is another good resource. Um, this one, it, it actually teaches you Linux like from the bottom up. So if you don't have any knowledge of it, uh, it's, it's a really a great resource. Uh, you can just Google cybersecurity CTF and, and find one, um, and find all kinds. Fifth and sixth, I'm sure. sure. Whatever can help. Hello, we can hear you. Last point, uh, hack the planet, but don't do anything illegal. Uh, you, you can buy a little Raspberry Pi for like 10 bucks and you can put Linux on it and you can hack that thing all day long. Um, find an old computer. Uh, try not, you know, don't use like mom's computer, grandma's computer, or something like that. Um, but uh, find an old computer, Goodwill, you know, stuff like that. And uh, set up a little lab at home and uh, hack into it, practice. Goes online. There's all the information is out there. It's it's free essentially. Everything's out there. Yeah, you just you have to have the drive and the determination to to want to do it. There are all bug bounties where companies pay you and give you permission to hack their websites. Um, and I mean, there's most of the big corporations have a bug bounty program at this point. But you sign up and uh, they give you permission to try and hack their website. Part of that is, of course, reporting back to them what you found, but there are people that make livings doing bug bounties uh, full time, just sit at home and, and hack websites. So um, yeah, that, that about wraps it up. I'm gonna leave you with one thing. Um, always try and think like a hacker. You wanna be inquisitive. You wanna learn how everything works uh, because you have to know how stuff works to find a flaw, you know, in, in how it works. Um, always be learning, always be improving yourself. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, put it up to any questions or anything, if anybody has any. Could we ask a question of Jace? Yeah, absolutely. Jace, we're here at Jefferson High School. We've got about five ROTC Air Force cadets in here. Um, is there some prerequisite they would need to help them if they go on into the Air Force? And also we have a gamers club here. Would, would gaming be a, a help if they wanted to get into cybersecurity? Yeah, okay. so Air Force. Um, like cybersecurity hacking stuff, you're gonna need a clean background. I'm assuming ROTC y'all have one, but you know, don't don't do anything stupid. Don't do drugs. Don't you know? Don't commit any crimes or anything like that. Um, as long as you are, uh, you have all your stuff together and you show interest and drive and motivation, you'll go far. Uh, but, you know, everything else, it, it's just everything's out there ready for you to take. You know, you, you just have to take initiative and do it. Um, as far as gaming, okay, so I, I'm a gamer, right? I, I, I grew up gaming. I, I don't have a lot of time anymore, unfortunately, but uh, um, I, I love gaming because it forces you to think outside the box. Uh, you know, in life, we're, we're like, we're set with these, you know, certain rules and we're not allowed to go outside of them. But, uh, you know, in, in the real world, especially in the business world, right, you have issues and um, you, you know, there's Approach that people want you to take, but if you can, you know, flank and, and approach that issue from a different side, um, think of it like a puzzle, right? Um, you know, if you can, if you can solve the issue uh, through, you know, super unique and, uh, uh, you know, normal uh, left and right limits, you, you really go far. And uh, gaming is, it, it's intellectually stimulating. 
We have a question from the other class that's on. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez's class asks, will the Russian hackers affect the outcome of our next presidential election? Yeah, wow, good we talk about we talk about uh, foreign influence a lot, and uh, there's been a big effort for election security. Um, there was a th so there's this hacker meetup every year called DefCon, and it's in uh, Las Vegas. I went this past year; it's pretty cool. But they actually had real uh, voting machines, and they'd open them up and they'd say "hack away," and uh, I, I didn't have time to mess with them, but there were people that were able to hack in and uh, successfully modify votes. To my understanding, that didn't happen this past year that we know of. The The influence that we're talking about was uh, through manipulation of social media, um, uh, news websites, fake news, all that stuff, right? Um, and that that is kind of a bigger policy issue um, and, and maybe even like a privacy or even moral issue as to uh, what what Facebook and Twitter should allow. I did see that Twitter is not going to allow political ads, period. So I, I think personally, I'm also a privacy advocate. I think that's a step in the right direction. Um, you know, you shouldn't be able to buy influence, if that makes sense. Uh, that being said, you know, Russian hacking groups, uh, China, North Korea, I mean, they're actively, they're, they're trying everything they can, you know. Uh, being in cyber defense, we have to get it right every time. The bad guys only have to get it right one time, and they have all the time in the world. So we we need we need people. We need good, qualified, smart, motivated people. Are there any other questions? Anybody have a question? All right, and Ms. Rodriguez, I'll give you a minute to allow your class to type in any other questions they might have, of course. And um, Coach Ian, I think you're still unmuted, so you can ask away. <laughs> we, uh, we have a question here from a student at Jefferson. Go ahead. What's a firewall? Firewall. Um... A firewall is, it, 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 it has rules that allow certain connections coming um, and that could be, it only allows certain computers to connect to uh, the system. It, the system could be a website, it could be a cloud instance or something like that. But uh, it, think of it like a filter. It only lets certain stuff in and out. Yes. And part of cybersecurity is configuring uh, firewalls and and allowing access where you need access and preventing access to everybody else. That's kind of the the eternal cat and mouse game that we play. For an individual, what would you say the number one thing is they can do to protect themselves online? Okay. <laughs> uh, password managers. I I used to be guilty of it myself, but there's a tendency for us to reuse passwords everywhere, right? It's hard to remember. You got to have a capital letter. You got to have numbers. You got to have a special character. Um, a password manager. Uh, LastPass is a good one. Apple has one built in. But what happens is you have one master password, and then it saves and automatically generates passwords for everything else. So what happens is uh, your account gets breached somewhere, and your password gets leaked. And this has happened like it happens all the time, like hundreds of times per year that passwords gets leaked, get, passwords get leaked. Um, if you reuse passwords, then one leaked password means all your accounts are gonna get compromised. So I'm a big fan of using password managers. If, if that could give you one tip, that would be it. Um, what level of um, education and what qualifications do you have to be to be in cybersecurity? Most employers want you to have a bachelor's degree. There are certainly exceptions to that. Um, you know, if if you are exceptionally skilled and you can network with the right people, you could certainly get a job. Um, they're if you want to advance, they're going to want you to have a degree, uh, just a bachelor's degree. Um, 
And, you know, I, I work with other security analysts that have business degrees. Um, there's one person that has a medical degree. Um, it, it's, it's, there's a lot of check the box kind of stuff, but you know, like I said before, a computer science degree is going to give you an excellent foundation. You're, you're going to learn how computers work on such an intimate level that uh, you're going to understand all kinds of flaws and vulnerabilities and be able to find stuff that, that maybe somebody with a more general background won't. Anybody else with a pregunta? Mr. Rodriguez sent in another question. Do employers use hackers to aid with the hiring process? Um, talking maybe about being careful about posting things on social media where a potential employer could search your name and use it not to hire you. Okay. So that right. So a company cannot and and should not um, hack an applicant, right? They shouldn't log into their accounts without their uh, permission and without their knowledge. Um, so that, that shouldn't and won't happen. That being said, whatever you put on social media is, is, is out there pretty much forever. Right. Um, even if you like delete tweets, right. There, there's still websites that archive tweets. So I, you can't go back and delete those. Um, I talked about being a privacy advocate, um, protect your information, right. Um, you know, people talk about, I'm going on vacation soon. If, if somebody's profiling you and you're talking about going on vacation soon, they're going to know, hey, this person's going to have an empty house for two weeks. And, uh, hey, you know, they posted pictures wearing jewelry and with their TV and PS4 and all this stuff. Um, try and make yourself a hard target. Don't give the bad guys anything to work off of. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, we have one more here at Jefferson. Go ahead. You're a rank in the army. I got uh, medically retired in 2013. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions? Yeah, we had a question about the dark web. Guys, hey, we can be heard. <laughs> So is the question about the dark web? <laughs> what, what is the dark web? Um, so the dark web, it can refer to a few different things. Um, so we have like the standard internet, right? And there's like all these websites we can go to and uh, download stuff, look at pictures, look at cat videos, stuff like that, right? There's also, they, they call it the dark web. And it's, think of it like, a parallel internet right and they're not connected um and it can be used for good purposes it's super super private right so they use it in china you know right now china's having a bunch of uh, uh political um issues and and protests and all kinds of stuff and the chinese government is like uh they're they're looking into everybody's accounts you know they, we don't they don't have the same privacy rights that we have here so they use the dark web where they can uh, because all that information is encrypted. Uh, that being said, the encryption can also be used for nefarious purposes, right? So um, that's, you know, people can buy and sell drugs and other other bad stuff through the dark web because it's so anonymous. So it's, it's kind of a double edged sword. It's got advantages and disadvantages. But, uh, it, you know, it, it exists as part of life and, and uh, learning to navigate and work around it and work with it, it you know it's it, it'll only help you as a person to understand it uh tor is what it's called t-o-r if you want to google t-o-r and learn about it it's kind of interesting how it works if that's your thing 
Um, there's some students in Mr. Rodriguez's class who would like to know what made you want to be a hacker. Okay. Um, so when I was working on our narcotics team, we would take somebody's, uh, like a drug dealer, right? We'd bust them and we would want to know where they're getting their stuff from. So we would take their computers and bring it to our digital forensics people and, uh, kind of working with those guys is what kind of sparked my interest with it and just learning how how in depth things can be and kind of unraveling this picture and like painting a, a picture of who this person is. Um, that being said though, you know, I've, I've always just been interested in, in like hacking stuff and, and breaking things and taking stuff apart, learning how stuff works. That's, uh, that's really the, the hacker culture is, is not necessarily being a criminal or anything, but uh, you know, learning how stuff works.